In our previous video, we've had various ordinals, such as Omega, Epsilon, Zeta, and Eta. But we can only declare new ordinals so many times. We don't have an infinite number of letters. So we're going to use a new notation. We have Phi. Then, we have Alpha. This is the level of the ordinal. We'll get into that later. Let's have Phi Alpha when Alpha is equal to zero. That's Phi Zero. Phi Zero is equal to Omega. Open and close parenthesis. Let's just have an X. This is the index of Omega. When alpha is equal to 1, that's phi 1x. This is equal to epsilon sub x. Then, phi 2x is equal to zeta x. To recap all of this, phi 0 is equal to omega. Phi 1 is equal to epsilon. Phi 2 is equal to zeta. And don't forget their index. Phi 3 is equal to eta. Phi 4, that's an infinite nesting of etas. This is also called the eta fixed point. We can keep increasing the index of phi. This way, we are effortlessly creating bigger ordinals. Remember, omega is just equal to phi zero, and epsilon is just equal to phi one. So how do we use phi alpha of x in the fast-growing hierarchy? We simply plug it under f. Alternatively, it can also be written like this. Let's go over to the rules. Let's have phi alpha x of n when x is equal to zero. You do phi alpha minus one n times. Let's have phi one zero of two. Because we have phi one, we do the phi zero process. We do it two times. Phi zero of zero, that's equal to omega to the zero. Any number raised to zero is equal to one. Phi zero of one is equal to omega to the one. Any number raised to the power of 1 is just the number itself. Omega diagonalizes into a 2. This becomes f2 of 2, which is equal to 4. If we did phi 1 of 3, that's going to be 3 copies of the phi 0 function. This is equal to f epsilon naught of 3. But what about phi alpha x of n when x is greater than zero? We also do n copies of phi alpha minus one. And inside this open and closed parenthesis is phi alpha. And then we have x minus one. And then we add a plus one. And let's not forget n. Looks too cryptic. Let's have an example. Let's have phi 1, 1 of 3. We do three copies of the phi 0 function. And inside this parenthesis, we do phi 1. Because we have 1 as our value of x, it reduces into a 0. And then, we add a plus 1. As you can see, this resembles omega to the omega to the omega to the epsilon 0 
plus 1. And as we've known in our previous video, this turns into omega to the epsilon naught times omega. So phi 0 phi 1 0 plus 1 turns into phi 0 phi 1 0 times omega. Omega to the epsilon naught collapses into just epsilon naught. So phi 0 phi 1 collapses into just phi 1. So that's phi 1 0 times omega. Omega diagonalizes into a 3. So phi 1 0 times 3 breaks down to phi 1 0 times 2 plus phi 1 0. I'll just halt right here. I forgot to mention, but we can even have phi omega. We can also have phi epsilon naught, phi zeta naught, phi eta naught. We can even have an index of phi zero of zero. We can even nest phi functions like this an infinite number of times. This new sequence is called Gamma Knot.